Do we have Mike? Yes, we have Mike. If we were all together living hundreds, thousands of years ago in Europe, Asia, northern Africa, we probably would have been bound to the soil by necessity or by law, reporting to some landlord or duke or baron. And we would have probably never gone far from our homes. And possibly in our lifetime, if we were lucky, we might have encountered coming through our small village, because it probably in most cases would have been a small village, a wandering storyteller called a bard, who would have been telling epic poems of the great events of human history, or possibly in the, some cases of the uh, shenanigans of the uh, gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus, Trojan Wars, King Arthur and the Round Table, and the like. And you might have heard something at that time that would have gone, it is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth, one of three. By thy long gray beard and glittering eye, now wherefore stops thou me? The bridegroom's doors are open wide, and I am next of kin. The guests are set, the feast is met, mayst hear the merry din. He holds him with his skinny hand. There was a ship, quoth he. Hold off, unhand me, graybeard loom. If soon's his hand dropped he, he holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest stood still and listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. Anyway, those are, that's part of the opening uh, lines to uh, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, written in 1820 by Coleridge, and that's the kind of storytelling that I like to do. About 100 years, well, about 50 years later, poetry starts to change, and modernism comes in, and people are, artists are saying, this is, this is not the kind of stuff we want to do anymore. We don't want to hear stories, we don't want emotion. So then we, we go to uh, 1916, and we get a poem called In a Station of the Metro. And it's only one line long. It's by Ezra Pound, and he wanted to change the world of literature, particularly of poetry. And so he writes, the apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet black bow. So now we've gone to metaphor, where you have to think about what the, the words mean and what what, what representations there are that are not manifest, as in the, the first example. And just, I just have to have, because I have the, it's so much fun to be up here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I just have to read. We have a, a new uh, poet laureate of the, of the United States announced last week. Does anybody know her name? Do we even know that we had one? Well, I'll let, that'll, that will be your homework assignment, to go, to go find out uh, the name of this woman. But a former uh, poet named Billy Collins um, is rather uh, my, my adversary in all this, because he is defending, in, in, uh, in the 1990s, he's defending this new form of poetry. And he writes, just very briefly, and then we will go into storytelling, he writes an introduction to poetry. And he says, I ask them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide, or press an ear against its hive. I say, drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out, or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at its author on the opposite shore. But all they want to do is tie the poem to the chair with a rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. And I'm sorry, but Billy and I are not going to get along because I want our, our uh, poetry to, uh, to
tell us what it means. And so we're going to go back and do some of the older things, and then I'm going to do some of my own things, which are in the same vein of the storytelling, like this uh, famous tale called The Charge of the Light Brigade. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade! Was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, stormed that with shot and shell. Boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell rode the 600. Flashed all their sabers bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabering the gunners there, charging an army while all the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke. Cossack and Russian reeled from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the 600. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell, while horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the mouth of hell, back from the jaws of death, all that was left of them, left of 600. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made, all the world wondered. Honor the charge they made, honor the Light Brigade, noble 600. Alfred Lord Tennyson, ladies and gentlemen. Written in 1854, Battle of Crimea, fascinating story of how they transported horses in the the holds of ship for 77 days through pitching waters, and uh, it was uh, an amazing story. 